Hello there. Do you want to date hot single monsters in your area? Well, I've got good news. Monster Prom is coming up in just three weeks, and we have six hot bachelors and bachelorettes just waiting to be wooed. So, you might be wondering, and rightfully so, the fuck is this? Ah. It's called Monster Prom, and it is a competitive dating sim that you and up to three of your friends can play, and it functions much more akin to a board game, and is essentially a phenomenally fun and funny party game. Now, admittedly, I wasn't that sure about it, but Danny convinced me to play it. She said she's seen it, and it's a lot of fun, so I did. I streamed it with her and Cotton, and it was such a blast that I just, I had to make a video. Initially, then, I'm gonna throw out this sentence. Do you like the sound of advising a ghost filled with more cocaine than ectoplasm on the best way to take a naked panther fight selfie? If the answer is yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm alright to do that. Then you probably like this game. So the plan is to take you through a typical match of this and how it all goes down and works and then intersperse it with some of the better moments from my first full go through of it. Now, definitely play this with a group of friends in a way that you can communicate. It's got local co-op, it can do online, seriously enhances the experience, read the text out, get into it and just enjoy the absurdity of what you'll encounter. The art style's wonderful, every character's super exciting expressive, there's some great faces, the situations are bonkers, and there's so many things to discover. Ah, it, oh, it really does have some serious appeals. So, to begin with, you choose a character each. You can play as a mysterious, mouthless being with little, like, helper faces hi, on their shoulder, who I'm quite fond of. You can play as this flaming hot chick. You can play as uh, a zombie or peppy Frankenstein's monster Dress. And it doesn't really make a huge difference outside of your icon and what you look like in some of the scenes that are drawn, but, you know, there you have it. Now, I was very torn between the two on the left, so it ended up being a pull, and, well... Oh, no, five chicks Five chicks taking the lead. 15 to 16, 48 percent to 52 percent. Where will the votes lie? What do you make of that, Bob? 17 to 15. Yes. <laughs> Bob. So after that, you meet the six monsters that you can ask to prom, and hopefully they will say yes if you've played a good game and not been blocked by one of your fellow players. If you compete for love, two of you going after the same person does make for quite a brilliant experience, but the six of them are thus. We have Miranda Vanderblit. Built. 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 She's 19. She's a mermaid princess. Yays or nays? Next up, we have Damien LeVay. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Yay or nay? Next up, we have Scott Howell. A werewolf athlete who compensated for... I did it right that time, guys. For his rather small <laughs> brain with a stupidly huge heart. Yay or nay? He looks like the protagonist of a low-budget shonen. <laughs> Liam de Lioncourt. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he truly is a lovable dork. Never fuck hipsters! <laughs> he sounded like Hagrid giving advice in the background! <laughs> Alright, Harry, I've got some advice for you. Never fuck hipsters! Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Yay or nay? Never fuck hipsters! And then finally. Vera Oberlin, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. Then you're almost set. You and your group have to go through a series of questions which, um, range in their, uh, level of seriousness. I would love just a really quiet, somber theatre with each <laughs> present really tenderly just playing violin and everyone shitting. Can you imagine All Trump? Right. All right, so this is my plans for the country. We don't want to hear that. Play the violin. <laughs> I'm, I'm choosing heartbreaking violin solo. That I'm gonna, I'm to gonna go with America's next top president. I, obviously, it should be the wild grizzly bear. 
I'm creative. I'm so fun. And it gives you an initial splattering of stats to begin the game. Now, these stats are fairly important. They dictate how good you are at various activities and various interactions with the characters, whether you'll be successful, whether you won't be, money to buy various items in the shop, and uh, you kind of want to tailor your stats to who you're wanting to kind of go for. And uh, once you've got familiar with that, you have the school. Now, you take turns in doing a thing. So, for example, the first day on week one, you choose which part of the school you want to go to. Do you want to skip and just chill out in the bathroom all day? Do you want to go to the party tree? Over to you. You look so derpy retarded. Oh, God. Yes, more raves! Why did you start a half hour rave? Or the uh, library, and each area is tied to a different stat, so you kind of want to choose where you want to focus on, but also you want to choose where you think the one that you want to end up asking out at the very end is likely to be, so you have an opportunity to talk to them, get into a scenario, and help them out, or... Hey, you want to watch me run around the school? No! No! Hey, you want to watch me run around the school again? Not even remotely. Like, I'm going to run around the school again. Look, man, oh, you're not even really bold good. or fun. Yeah, how did Listen I... to the game, it's saying you're not fun. Yeah, but I'm, I'm smart and creative. A little. Fucking loser. <laughs> wow. Go right. somewhere. Where should I go? And these scenarios are really the bread and butter of the game. Ridiculous things happen, and you have to give your best reply. And while the writing is genuinely, most of the time, really quite good, there's some honestly hilarious things happen. My only real criticism of it is that sometimes the choices are so bonkers out there that you really have... I have no idea. Be like a bajillion ghosts. Uh, Only some of them get into the school, Josh. Uh, <laughs> somebody a please sexy cause problem. a sexy problem! Break the seven seals. <laughs> release Krillak fool! The, the world, world fucker! fucker. <laughs> I don't want that! Send in the party goblins! <laughs> well, I don't want to like... I don't want like to break the seven seals. Royal claps above your head. Send in the party goblins! I don't like either of these. Uh, but I don't want to break seven Well, seals, you I shouldn't have I'm... gone to class. <laughs> Fuck, oh. I thought it was the right thing to do. Apparently not. <laughs> but I, yeah. I went to class and sent in party goblins, I guess. Polly poses for a goblins gone wild. Oh my god. Why goblins. is this happening in my classroom? <laughs> goblins have gone wild. The party leaves nine, nine dead, dead oh, hundreds yeah, wounded, goblins. and your two friends completely satisfied. Got some bonus though. Like, I once had a choice between chopping all of the tables in half with an axe or releasing the rooster. Now, obviously, I'm not giving you the context of how that choice came up, but even with context, it's like, I don't know which one is the correct one. Now, technically, there isn't correct one. You do what you want, but there is a correct one in that one option will make the person that you're wanting to ultimately ask to the prom favor your character more, and one of them won't. So you want to deliberately tailor your answers to them if you're playing more strategically, or you can just play true to yourself and pick whatever and not really care about it. There's lots of ways you can actually go through this, and essentially that just happens every time you're at the school. You'll be at the school during the day, you'll be at the school during the night, this happens multiple times, and you just take turns going places, dealing with the scenario, answering a question, and hopefully building up your stats and favour with one of the characters. Cotton decided that he needed to, um, Rave. Lazarus. I really like the outside. Oh, oh my god. god! Stop! <laughs> Stop raving! Why? Why do you do this to yourself? Every single day what and every single night! Small magical Latino cat! What? Small magical Latino cat. Every single time. I go outside. Start Why? raving. <laughs> what the fuck? Stop! Stop! Hey, it's it's Don't one the small the magical cat Latino cat again. Bob the scary clown. Every yes. single time, you just go to that tree and rave. Well, yeah. That's my day. Then you also have the challenges between rounds. Now, these are fantastic. They'll usually ask you to think of something, a brand or a food, etc. And you have to all declare your answer before it reveals what the actual challenge is. Oh, snap. Challenge. Everybody choose an occupation, say your choice out loud for the rest of the players before clicking! Uh, occupation. Uh, uh, 
uh, oh, um, 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 uh, accountant. Uh, Shit. Lawyer. YouTuber. Oh. Shit. That's not an accountant. That's not an accountant. <laughs> Alright, what's the thing? Click! Tell you guys about how weird it would be to see a slutty costume based on the selected well, occupation! Well, slutty YouTubers is literally yeah, part of being Yeah, you'd be last, YouTuber. Josh. That's already part of your occupation. Oh, come on! <laughs> you discuss it amongst yourself, argue, and come to a begrudging agreement on who actually had the better answer, and you vote first, second, and third, and that decides the turn order for the next round. Now, normally the turn order isn't hugely important, except for the cafeteria segments. Now, outside of just choosing where you go during the school hours at night and day, you can go to the cafeteria. And in here, there's different people sat in different configurations, and ideally, you want to go sit at the table with the person that you're trying to woo. Now, if the person you're trying to woo also happens to be sat with someone that's being wooed by one of your fellow players, and they're ahead of you in the turn order, they will pick that table, making it unavailable for you on your turn, and then you're screwed. You can't talk to who you want to talk to. So the the main time that the challenges are important to win is right before cafeteria segments. They don't matter as much before the school. So yeah, cafeteria is um, it's an interesting experience. Polly's on this table, but I want to talk to Vampire Boy, but I don't want to talk to Polly. It's fucking go, everywhere. Go, go talk to Wolfman. Yeah, I'll talk to Wolfman and Moimid. The blood of your father's enemies, Miranda. That's why it's so delicious. You ever think this, Scott? It's a sauce. Made of secrets. Made of secrets. <laughs> Made of secrets. Well, there's clearly... Oh, of course! <laughs> secret sauce! That clue is in the title! It's not secret sauce, it's secret sauce! Oh my god. Well, what are the secrets made out of? Shh, Miranda! It's a secret! <laughs> but... <laughs> Shush! <laughs> ah! Shush! Shush! <laughs> she didn't even say anything that time! <laughs> <laughs> Why is he rubbing on his chest? Lastly, oh then, there is random events that can happen to a character. In this case, Danny was out at the weekend and got stopped by Polygeist and had to choose between two selfies. One by Cotton, one by me, and which one was the hotter selfie? This one's Lazarus. A classic, classic bathroom, bathroom selfie. <laughs> she took a picture of you in the bathroom. Apparently. That's fucking creepy. Does that mean Josh is gonna be in class? With with his ferrets? Make Classic you have to fight, Selfie! Classic! So, fun things like that happen. And then, at the end of it, you go through these cycles. School at day, school at night, cafeteria, random event, choose your options, gain your stats, and discuss, and challenge, and it's ultimately very simple. The meat of the game is just having fun with the people that you're playing with, enjoying the absurdity of the situations, laughing, and just, you know, having fun. It's a party game, right? There's not a huge amount of depth. There's not mad strats that you're going to be employing. It's just Go with it. Let that be a life lesson to you all. <laughs> Sick <laughs> burns, don't buy fresh outfits. And at the end, you get a payoff or not so much payoff when you finally get to ask who you hopefully secured enough favor with out to the prom. Or if you have an awful game and ending up going to minus one fun. I became so unfun accidentally that I became a fun black hole. But, you know, I had good smarts. Uh, I tried to go for an ask out snake goggin lady. Should I What's just be point? like, no, I'm not fun, I'm not going. I'm not bold or fun someone. enough. I'm just gonna go well, away with my money and my smarts. You could still ask snake girl, she might turn you down not quite so harsh. She might <laughs> let you touch one of her snacks. <laughs> You're asking me to go to the prom with you? Like, are you crazy? Uh, You're not even fun. Wow. Wow. Oh. Holy oh. shit. Oh. Oh. oh, God. Savage. Daddy, save me. Get wrecked. Oh. oh, no. I'm not okay anymore, Shark Eyes. Oh. Oh, <laughs> epic loser. She <laughs> an achievement, epic loser. How could you? It broke the essential process oh. of growing up, Josh. Look at her <laughs> laugh at you, though. She's the doing snakes like, are oh, laughing. Oh, oh, oh. Even the snakes oh, are laughing. Oh, oh. Yep. Still hurts. 
And then you get to a end screen where you realize just how much there is in this game, just how many scenarios there are to go through, and you're like, yeah, let's play through this a few more times. Secret endings, loads of achievements, and essentially it's just a lot of fun, right? Like, there's not a lot to it, but it is a lot of fun. There's a lot to do. Get yourself a group of friends if you think you might like this kind of thing, and just enjoy an evening with this game, and probably a fair amount of drink too, but yeah, that is Monster Prom. I enjoyed it a lot. I would recommend it. One of the best, in fact, might just be the best party game I've ever played. Let me know if you enjoyed this kind of thing. Like if you did, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time. Oh, good boy. Cotton, by the way, ended up becoming a party scientist along with a polygeist, thanks to all of the raving. They even decided to possess a corpse at a funeral. That was uh, something. And they ended up having a beautiful ending where she realized the secret ingredient to all her fun partying was Cotton's character. So, ah, even Danny ended up with uh, Innocent Werewolf Man. I was just alone, so that's fun. <sighs> I feel like next time I need to be a little bit more ruthless, play a bit more competitively, you know, you know, game it a little bit more. That's, that's, that's fine. You know, I'll tactic it. I don't care. I I'll be, I'll be super serious in monster dating. You have no idea. You don't know me. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.